Have you ever wished your cardboard wasn't so easy to bend and crush? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you a way to make your cardboard projects uh, much stronger, and it's really cheap, and you can even do it once you are done crafting your cardboard model, and it's already completely finished. So, uh, what this method is, is you are going to apply a wood glue coating to your cardboard craft. So, on here, I have a 50-50 mixture of wood glue and water. The wood glue that I used is traditional traditional tight bond they are original glue they make tight bond two and tight bond three as well uh the original is not waterproof and the other ones are designed for like water resistant and waterproof applications so this is actually the cheapest one to use and you can see i've used up uh, about that much of it just creating this and i've already pasted on quite a bit so it lasts a long time and now uh I have a finished piece right here and but first I'm gonna take you through a bunch of the things um, a bunch of things that it takes to coat your cardboard. So first of all, when you're coating your cardboard, it takes time to dry. Obviously, uh, the wood glue is going to be really runny because we've mixed half water with it. And it doesn't really um, dissolve. This has been sitting around for over a week, and it doesn't really separate, which is nice. However, there is a little bit of stuff stuck to the bottom of the container uh, down there. You can see that little ring on the top. That is like tackier stuff. So I like to try to brush my brush against that when I'm picking it up. I'm about to show you how to apply it to your cardboard. It's not really that tricky. Uh, but brushing against that kind of makes ensures that I collect a good amount. I'm going to wring the brush out a little bit so I don't have too much. And then I'm protecting my table with a few pieces of paper. But then I'll brush it on. And I have the labels on these pieces of cardboard actually mis mixed up. This one says regular and the other one says coated but I'm coating the regular one. So now from here, I want to make sure I get a good coating. And there's a couple things we can do. We can, we can let it dry and just let it sit. Um, and I like to coat both sides because that's going to give me a stronger coating. So I'm going to come around here, get my brush wet again, coat it more. Boom. Go all the way around there. Your fingers are going to get a little bit of wood glue on them, but that's totally fine. Uh, and then I like to go around the edges too, try and jam a little bit down into, oh, into the uh, corrugation of the cardboard. Okay, I got a lot on here. It's going to be pretty thick. Now, when it dries... It's wood glue. Wood glue takes time to dry. We added water. It's going to take even longer to dry. So what I recommend doing here is you can create like a little stand for it. I have some that have like some wires sticking out of them from when I was doing testing. And I can put it on top of there and let it dry. However, all the glue is going to want to kind of run to the lower edges. So I could flip it every once in a while and try to keep the glue distributed or like keep spinning it or something. Uh, or... Uh, especially since it likes to kind of get away from the edges, what you can do is use a wood, uh, not a wood, a uh, uh, hot air gun. So this is going to get kind of loud, but I use my air, my hot air gun on the second setting. Uh, I'll link it in the description down below if you want to get one. Uh, I don't think it's linked there right now. But we're going to take this and turn it to level two because we want as much wind as possible because that's going to dry it out faster. Then I have the heat turned up pretty high as well because I still want it to dry out fast. Now, what this is going to do, if we let it dry regularly, it's going to be a pretty like even nice-ish coating, but it it's going to be like lay flat. When we heat it up fast, it's going to create more bubbles inside of it, but you're going to be able to spread it around and distribute it more the way you want because you're going to be able to watch it dry in real time. I have my piece here. It's coated on both sides. It's still super liquidy. When I hit it with the heat gun, it's going to get tacky really fast. And I want you to be able to watch that. So I'm going to zoom in here on our piece. I'm going to take the heat gun and I'm going to stop talking because I just want you to watch and it's going to be too noisy to hear me.
Whoa, so that one really bubbled up huge. I have actually never had any of them bubble up that big before. And now I think some of the heat actually works its way around to the other side because this is getting tacky back here. But you can see on here, all of them sort of bubbled up. It doesn't always get that big, like I was saying. But what we can do again is, to, well, sort of flatten them down. I like to use my hand because it works better and can kind of just flatten them out uh, or scratch them, whatever it takes to sort of make them flatter. Now, this isn't going to make it beautiful, but it's going to be able to be strong because we can go again really fast with a second coat on here of wood glue. And I feel like when I coat it the second time, the wood glue sticks a little bit better, especially if I leave it kind of tacky uh, and don't dry it quite all the way. Now, when you're applying the wood glue, remember it is mixed half water. So uh, it's going to make the cardboard a little bit weaker when you apply it because it soaks in a little bit and then the cardboard gets kind of soggy and it'll break easily. So just watch out for that, especially if you're letting it soak for a long time and not heat gunning it right away. I'm going to lay this piece down on here. And now my favorite way to do this is just use a little wire or something to hold it down while I blow it with the heat gun. I forgot that I would glue on the back and I just glued it to the paper, but we can lay this all down again, try to flatten it out. And it, I don't know. I, I want you to, I want to be honest with you for just a second. Uh, there are a lot of things that I don't know. These are all just tips from one crafter and one maker to another. I really hope that you're going to be able to take them home with you and make them your own, make them better, because a lot of you are actually a lot better at crafting than I am. You're better at working with your cardboard and doing those sorts of things. So I just want to share you with the we, I want to share with you the things that I know and give you the opportunity to make them your own and make them better, uh, whatever way works best for you. So uh, I really haven't tested this very much using this uh, coding process to make cardboard pieces stronger, but uh, I have really high hopes for it. And I think it can do some pretty great things. Uh, so this is going to be my third coat on this side of the cardboard piece. It might be better to coat one side and flip it than coat the other side and flip it. But I've just been going on this side because uh, it'll be faster for the sake of our live stream. I'm going to take the heat gun again and heat it up. And like I said, this other piece I used before did not bubble nearly this much. It just had some around the edges. So I guess we'll just see how this turns out. And it's possible that all that bubbling could make it stronger because it creates kind of a web of dried wood glue across the top of the cardboard. You can see that almost instantly a lot of the little bubbles pop and you get these little speckled shapes until you hit it for a little longer and the top surface of the wood glue dries. And then it's gonna kind of crack. And then from there, we're gonna start getting our bubbles. The bubbles, I believe, are when the water boils underneath the wood glue. And then, whoa, it's a huge bubble. That's weird. And then after the water boils, the wood glue coating on the top doesn't break and it just creates a bubble. Like I just pushed it too hard and broke it, like I said, because the wood glue soaks in and it weakens the cardboard for the moment. We're going to leave that alone for now. It looks really bad, actually, like really atrocious because of all those bubbles that we made. Uh, I'm not sh quite sure how to control that, but you can see the other side where it sort of soaked in and got heated up in a more natural way. 
and uh, it did rip off in a couple sections because I set it down on the table, but that is a lot smoother. However, it takes a little bit longer to do it that way. So this is our coded piece. Uh, it looks really bad. Uh, it can also look like this. And now before I jump into like what it actually sounds and feels like, uh, I want to ask, pass the question off to you. Do you, what do you coat your cardboard projects with? Do you, uh, use uh, wood glue like this, or do you, uh, do you do epoxy or do you coat your cardboard projects at all? Uh, I'd love to hear that. And also drop any questions that you have in the comments or in the chat, and I'll be sure to answer those. I reply to every single comment on my YouTube videos, so uh, I'll be sure to get back with you. Now, what the cardboard sounds like is sort of an interesting thing because over here, we can compare. This is a piece that I heat gunned yesterday a few times. It had been coated before that and dried for a long time. So now it's had a while to dry. It's actually been beat up a little bit in the process of uh, me using it and doing a few tests on it. But it sounds like when I tap it with my fingernails, a very hard, glossy surface. I can scratch it and it sort of like makes that sound. Now, this is a regular piece of cardboard for comparison. And then our coated cardboard. I'm just trying to give you a feel since you can't touch it with your own hands. What this actually is like. And now if I take like a metal piece and tap it. That's our regular cardboard was the second one. Uh, so it is definitely harder. It's stronger. Uh, I have tested it. It has been able to lift more than an equal piece of non-coated cardboard, but it isn't that much stronger. It's not like a miracle uh, that we're working here and changing things with. So uh, just be aware of what you're dealing with. So uh, it, it can improve the strength by a, a decent bit, but not that much. Now, I have an entire headphone stand here that I coated with this method. Uh, I put wood glue all around it. Now, something to watch out for is whenever you're coating paper, uh, it's going to really soak in and make the paper look kind of wet. And that looks kind of nasty. But also the wood glue is going to look bad on the paper. You can see like on the edges, uh, it's kind of like yellowish and odd looking. Uh, so I don't recommend coating paper if you can avoid it or just paint it afterwards or something. But this entire thing has been coated. And the biggest benefit of this comes in the corners where all the corners and the edges, especially of the, the paper piece is funny, uh, is really hard and not going to wear down like it would if it was just regular cardboard. So I'm a lot more confident in like the longevity of this piece staying around for a long time uh, now that I've coated it. And you might be able to see the Con comparison between the coated and non-coated sections. Uh, I heat gunned a lot of this side and was coating it, but I accidentally wiped too much off of the bottom down here. So that's just lightly coated cardboard. And then we've got a little bit heavier coat up here and you can see that like glossy difference in it. And the other side, I let dry a little bit more naturally. The whole thing is just sort of matte and you can hear it's a softer finish than the other side. So that's how that works out. Now, this is, depending upon how you do it, I think it stronger if you simply let it soak into the cardboard because you make the entire cardboard structure hardened by that wood glue. Uh, but if you heat gun it, you can go faster and put more coats on quickly. So it's kind of up to you. But if you heat gun it, it creates more of like a shell instead of um, like it soaking into the cardboard as much. But I'll also have links in the description down below to all of the stuff that I'm mentioning in this video. So you can check it out there. If you want to get some tight bond like I have, uh, there's a link to Amazon right at the top of the description for you. Uh, now, uh, that is that is it. So if you want to learn easy ways to make cardboard stronger, this is pretty hard to get all of this going some of the time. I've got 10 ways to make cardboard stronger. There's a video right here you can click or tap on or click or tap on another video I have right here on how to make cardboard corners much stronger. As always, my name's Eli Tennant. This is Maker Brain and God bless you. I hope to see you in another video.